It says off the record right now. Now we are recording. So now we're recording. So you want me to do three, yeah. two, one, and you think this is eventually going to make its way to YouTube? All right, I, I yeah. much respect when it does. Okay, I'm counting down again. Three, two, one. Hello, Internet. According to Heim Time and the notifications I'm getting on my Apple Watch and my iPhone 6, this is episode 186 of the Tech Podcast in 30. Man, we've done a lot of keynotes over the years, haven't we, Heim Time? And this is probably my least favorite one. Ah, uh, you're an idiot, Heim. No offense. Sorry. <laughs> Paul, Paul you, you, the, the Paul, dollar drop that the Apple stock took was not an indication that this Paul was Paul N. Shapiro of searchwilderness.com. Tell Heim Cohen of HeimTime.com why this was not, by a long shot, the least exciting keynote. It wasn't the least exciting, but I don't think it was particularly exciting. Okay. I thought we had like a live Onion article with the, the, the pencil. Okay, well, we, we, we have, there is a lot of material to, like, there's a, there's a lot of ammunition to kind of rip Apple apart here, certainly. At the meta level, Wait, if you go... You, you, with, start with, you start with ripping apart? I mean, I mean, that's how I would start, but I'm telling you, I was not... I was ready to go. I was ready to be happy, and then every announcement just crushed my soul. It was not... Everything it I thought. in any way soul-crushing time, except that you have to wait until September 30th to, to put El Capitan... On your aging 2009 MacBook. I mean, that's the only thing that makes me happy. But Tim Cook, okay, I'll, I'll say at a meta level, right? He races these things along. He is a runner, man. He just he he's like, go, go, go. Your demo is three minutes, and if you are talking at 301, we're gonna Academy Awards you right off the stage. He didn't do any charts about the financials of the company. He like wants these things to move. And the like the criticism I have is that. The Apple people don't seem super confident when they're up there. Phil Schiller's voice still, it, it seems a little nervous. And, uh, okay, that's that's my meta critique of it. But, Heim, Paul, you agree, disagree? Cook did a good job. What do you think? I'll let, I'll let Paul go first. I, I, don't, I don't think there was anything notable in terms of presentation style, at least not anything notable compared to, you know, previous keynotes. Nothing I picked up on, at least. I think you didn't pick up on the person on uh, what is it uh, Eddie Q who accidentally went backwards on the slide presentation and said oops. No, I missed that. What? Okay, because it's Steve- so Steve Jobs never made an oops on the slide. Okay, well, see, you know, who knows? Maybe Steve the polish, the polish was not there. It- well, I was embarrassed Eddie, to show this Eddie, in my class. Eddie Q's outfit was what was most embarrassing. That what white- color was the shirt? It was red. It was deep red. It was like blood red. It was the same red as the yeah. product red watch. It was page. project red like, but I think it may have been slightly different. But he looked like he was re- he looked like he should have been an extra in Boogie Nights. I mean, he was really he he, he looked a little strange. But, well, well, let's let's have a topic go. So, I was happy that they did not release a new watch. That would get a okay. whole lot of people. Let's, mad. Okay, I will. We we have how much? We probably wasted five minutes, which Tim Cook would not have allowed at this particular keynote. We're 20, we have 25 minutes left. I will race this along. Three minutes. We were exactly three minutes. Okay. So the watches, mid cycle refresh, added some stuff. Heim, Paul, how that. These are good. Okay. Is there a depreciation on value if you don't have one of the newer bands? They're different. They're, 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 they're aesthetically different. What are you even getting at? No, no, I'm saying, let's say, but all the specs are the same. So do you take a hit in value because you don't have the rose gold sport watch? They're just – they're different. I mean I don't think that any sensible person is going to, to look at it that way. The, the, that is – part of what they're emphasizing is that the aesthetic quality of it is core to it. It's not an ancillary thing. It's You want your watch to look a certain way because you wear it all the time. Do you wear it all the time? Yes, I wear it all the time. I have a different – I have a, a Chinese knockoff uh, link bracelet that, that works really well. It You know, it has the butterfly – Class, but it was like it was like. Paul, bucks. do you still wear your watch every day? Yeah. So, but the the point is that the this is kind of a new this is new ground for Apple to walk, doing just an aesthetic refresh. I mean, and the other thing is, there it's not diluting the actual gold watch, but they are acknowledging that there's a certain segment of the population that wants these things in gold. Um, the gold color is big. It's not only a China thing, but I think this is also a big holiday push. Just because this stuff is newer, it does. They were even saying it will make a great holiday gift. This is a way of padding out that fourth quarter of 2015. I think. Okay, I mean, look, I didn't have any issues with the watch. I thought that it needed some different colors and different things. They brought it. I'm assuming the the prices are still the same They're for the same, same. specs. And Paul, did you notice that they didn't bring out every shade of the sports band that Johnny Ive had shown in that box? But there are a couple of shades that now match 
the space gray aluminum um, sport, which is actually, I think, the biggest selling watch by far. Did you, did you see those? So you're, are you interested in that, those now? Would you pay $49 for a real Apple, like a blue that really goes with the hue of the aluminum? I'm Perhaps. So, so look, they they need to give people a space to try these things on. This is this is a, this is, I mean, I don't want to say it again, I guess, but this is like getting ready for the car. And C- Craig Federighi made a car did, joke, but yes, at tort- I did not see Craig Federighi. Maybe that would have he, made his my fingers day. were visibly shaking while he was doing his presentation, so he needed to like take a beta blocker or something before he got it. It's just like. Okay, out of the whole watch presentation, the best one was the airstrip for the doctors, even though I won't know one single doctor who would ever use that. Yes, even well, if you're let's, right. Let's, let's discuss the airstrip. I, I actually missed that part of the presentation. Is there it's okay because no, no doctor will ever use it. It just won't happen. 15 seconds, time. what is it? Okay, so basically, it's it's a way for doctors to communicate with patients at home or wherever. Where it the example they used was they they attached sensors to like the woman's belly and said, "Okay, start your test now." And the Bluetooth sensors would integrate with the watch, and then you can send it to the doctor, and the doctor it was, would. Get it, was, it. it was pulling at the heartstrings. It was like listen to your newborn babies, or not newborn yet to be but, born child's heartbeat in utero via your. It was like. It, it speaks to the future of where Apple wants to go. We've talked about it before. Health is a big part of it. That was like a, 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 a proof of concept. So if you're where, so let's say you're on, you're, you're measuring your blood sugar and the doctor says, okay, have this, this connected blood sugar monitoring test. It would, it would Bluetooth right. to the watch. You would send it to the, you would send it to the doctor and it's HIPAA compliant. And yeah, it's the, good. The other thing, but the doctor would sure, use it. Or is it a sensor? Or is it a sensor that can be added to a secondary device? It's 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 like a, a platform thing that they were proving that health kit works kind of. And then the other thing that they showed off was that it, doctors can manage their appointments using time travel on the watch. It was like a proof of concept. This was not something. This was not a cornerstone of the event. This is like almost okay. a throwaway. So I think I think we're we're pretty much done with the watch. We have a mid cycle refresh. It doesn't. I think they they might push off introduction of the Apple Watch until. Not, not. A, I think it'll be more than a year um, after the, the the first one was released. Uh, considering this refresh, and, and we'll see where they go with it. iOS, uh, well, sorry, Watch OS two was barely mentioned, but or, or rather, they just like rehashed all the old features. It's just like the upgrade is minimal. It, it's slight. So that's it. The watches okay, change now, colors. Now you want to talk about what I did like next, or what I Let, really let's wish keep, let's keep it in the order that they did it after I am. after the watch of oh, the iPad Pro. I wanted the iPad Pro. And then I saw the whole thing. I was so happy. And your soul was and, crushed, yeah. And my soul was crushed. That it's just a blatant surface. Um, can you give me some props on Blab, please? I only have two. Okay. How do you... Because Paul got 16. I have zero. Okay. So... The, the, the surface... Thank you, thank you, Paul. I now have many of them. Heim, you and I saw the surface when it was first released like four years ago now. I've since played with them in the Microsoft uh, malls, like stores and at a pop-up store. I don't. I still think it's kind of a mess. Um, but yeah, this is a surface. This is a surface. It's a surface. Okay, it's the keyboard for one hundred and sixty nine dollars, which is around the right price of a case keyboard thing. Those are ninety dollars from Logitech. Uh, the stylus. Okay, I like the idea it's of the a iPad pencil. Pro. It's a pen. The pencil. I I think the price is right. Seven ninety nine seems about right, but it's still gimped in the sense that it's not a full OS. You're still using, you're still using the iPad I, app. I just Although, don't know. iOS nine is much improved. It's much closer to a real OS in some ways with the the the, the multi. Uh... Well, the, the split screen, and, right, they, and, right. they, and they did the resolution thing smartly so that it basically can run a current iPad app next to another current iPad app. But Paul, going back to that, where is, it is technically GIMP. Certainly there's not a USB connection. Certainly like you you can't sideload apps onto it, but do you think that matters or do you think that that's kind of one of the pros? I think the surface is a mess because you can switch. I don't, I don't, I don't know. Have you played with the brand, the Surface Pro 3? I don't know which one I use time in the, that's the, the surface pro three is actually a really good device. But Paul, is it it GIMP for real or, or, or no? It, it bothers me personally. Like they're 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 selling this as basically as a computer replacement. It's a it's a, it's a laptop replacement, but it it's lacking the functionality of a you know a full PC. 
Um, but in some ways, it it might actually do that well. It might it might work. I don't know. So part of it's irking me, but I, I don't know. It may work. Look, it starts at seven ninety nine. Okay, it's a touch screen without the laptop, whereas the MacBook starts at nine ninety nine. Am I wrong on that? I can't remember the price on it. But that has a keyboard, but no touch screen. It's like, what? Where is this product market? Are they are they going to kill this? Uh, are they going to kill the MacBook? Are they going to kill the MacBook Air? No. This is a replacement for something, but. It, it, it feels like it's in the middle of two different devices. How many people get this and don't get the pencil? Is the pencil like the crux of it? Is this for people that are doing digital art? If this is this, are you going to hold it up and watch a movie? I, where, where's like the plurality of the people who buy this? Where where, where are they going to be at? Look, it, it sort look. of seems ridiculous to get an iPad Pro and not get the keyboard case and not get the pencil. I think if you're the type of person that that wants that that full um, closer to a, a PC replacement experience, you're going to be the guy that's going to go out and get the pencil and get the the, the keyboard case and 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 tr try to get that full experience. Um, that okay. being said, that brings the price up a lot, a lot. 11, Eleven inch MacBook Air, okay, and is eight ninety nine, and I think just the eleven inch macbook air just that computer is the equivalent of this uh the specs are about the same and you're talking about a hundred dollars more and gonna do so much more well you but know, it doesn't you're, have a you're, not, you're not accounting it's, it's okay but it also it runs ios apps which are just it, it's the fact that they limit the the os the kind of the exposure to all the stuff that can go wrong in an os in a way it makes the productivity easier to reach in some ways, running Microsoft Excel is going to feel really constrained on an iPad Pro. But in a lot of ways, when you're not getting to the fringes of how you use Excel, if you don't want to run a macro, if all of the documents are in your email and everyone is using OneDrive or something, I think it's going to actually feel better because you don't have, you're never going to get a Windows update notification in the bottom right hand corner like you are on a Windows 10 machine. The likelihood of it crashing is lower. In some ways, this is the, it really is a replacement. And it replaces it by doing less. Well, th back to the other question. I think, like Paul said, everyone buys the keyboard. The thing that irked me about the pencil is that it didn't fit into I, – I want it to fit right inside. There needs to be a place it for should, it. It should fit somewhere in the, the keyboard. I don't want a magnetic thing. I don't want – It should fit in the keyboard case somewhere. And we don't know for a fact that it doesn't yet, but yeah, you're no, right. No, but I want it to fit – I want it to fit like directly into, let's say, the headphone jack flush or right by the side. There's no reason why they couldn't do that. But when was the last time you used a stylus to draw something digitally? I mean, I have a walk. No, but it's not just – one of the cool things about the Note 5, and this is one of the features that I see a lot of people do, is they instantly pull out their stylus to jot a note right on the screen. Mm -hmm. okay. And it works well with the Samsung software. So I can see, okay, you have your iPhone out, and there's something in there. Even with your finger, you just touch a button – and you start writing on it, that would be really cool. So this, let's, this, let's, go ahead, let's Paul. discuss the the pencil because obviously there's this this huge thing that that you know Steve Jobs said like people don't want a, a stylus that was sort of antithetical to to the iPhone and the iPad originally, and now we have Apple actually introducing a stylus. It, Why is it acceptable? It's no accident that it's on this huge screen. Right. And I think that it is really fair to say that what he meant was the stylus is not a good replacement on a small screen for like having real capacitance touch sensing. And yeah, some of it was bluster. So he's like set up this trail of stuff that you can kind of like go back and, and second guess him and, or whatever. I don't even, I just, I would go at it the other way and say, what does it do now? If you're a digital artist, maybe it's, it's it would be life changing. Maybe it's like one of those Cintiq Wacom tablets, and for the first time, it will really feel like you're drawing. Maybe it's the closest thing to, to replacing. But the whole idea of the pencil, like it could have done, it could have been done a whole much lot better. The idea that you have to take a cap off and plug it into the lightning port, which says that they didn't embrace USB C on there. They're going to do lightning for another few more years before they embrace it. It should be plugged into the iPad and should be charged from there. There should be a way to charge it without having to charge it separately. And that's, this is, it's not, it wasn't conceived correctly. This is what I feel like a PC company or an Android company would do. And instead of really thinking the design through, well, they I, don't, the I don't think the pencil is meant to be a stylus in the same way that it is in the Note 3. It is, it is most definitely 
an accessory being used for specific tasks, um, maybe professional tasks where you're 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 an architect or you're doing CAD or you're, you're doing some sort of some, some sort of art. That's really the application, and it in, in, in that way, it's you, you don't need it as integrated as you do with like a note. So, so going to it from that angle, it's probably not even going to be a replacement for the finger. I bet you when you just have the home screen up, when you have Springboard up, you can't use the pencil to select an app. It seems like you have to be in app and then you're, you can use your fingers and the pencil simultaneously. I mean, it could be. The thing is, it's also very large. And it looks pretty big. We don't know if the eraser does anything. Certainly, you should be able to flip it around and do the eraser. I mean, if, that, if that's part of it. But maybe this is this is the type of thing where Apple's gotten it really, really right, and it will be a replacement for – it'll let digital artists actually save time or save paper if that is a good thing or a bad thing. I, the question that sticks in my mind, is this like is this an area where they – think, thinking back to uh, Jeff Goldblum in Jurassic Park, like they thought so much about whether or not they can, they didn't think about whether or not they should. I don't – is this necessary? Is this just a way of kind of unifying the MacBook Air and the iPad line? Because I think that that is like is kind of coming. Did they, should they have done this? You know, not yes. I think Apple wanted. I everyone's asking for Apple to release some sort of stylus, and they're going third party. And there's a whole lot of third party. There's a whole lot of garbage. Here you go. This the the. They 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 retool this. I'll give them credit. I like the whole idea that it's 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 enabled to with the right pressure, the right everything to be accurate. The the whole chart. I just think it's too big. I, I think that they could have done a much better job given another couple months. Well, you, but the idea is good. What would change in a couple of months? This was probably on Johnny Ives' design table for the last four years, five years. I mean, this you know conceptually it's been there right that make it smaller make it like i said well is the pencil going to work with it there's no force touch on the ipad pro presumably it, and so it has nothing to do with that is the i don't, I don't even know maybe the, some of the technologies are in, in, in there and they just didn't say so but is the, is the pencil ever going to work on a smaller device well that's the other question we don't know which obviously it should but, All right, so let's go a little, like one more thing about the pencil, then we've got to move on just because of time. But the, the pencil, it, you, you pull it apart, and you can charge it through the lightning port, which is also the case, apparently, for the remote on the thing that we're going to talk about next, which is Apple TV's update. Well, it's 15 seconds equals 30 minutes. So I will give you that, okay, you, you wait 15 seconds, and you get a decent amount of battery life. So, okay, so I'll give it that. But there still should be a way that it should take power directly from the... From the from the iPad Pro, um, not natively. What's the word? It without you doing anything. Okay. Cool. I, I mean, I, okay. I mean, I, I think that's right. So let's go on to the Apple TV. So the Apple TV looks exactly the same. I think it may be even it may even be smaller. I think this is and it, it has apps now. And it's an Amazon Fire, if you don't know. Okay. It's exactly an Amazon yep. Fire. That's what it is. Go ahead, Paul. You know TV. All right. So, so obviously one of the big features that they were highlighting was the, the voice capability, which is, yes, an Amazon Fire uh, feature as well. So I'm pretty sure the issue with that is that the voice search functionality is only going to work within the iTunes store. So if you're trying to find you know, a, a title on, on Netflix or on Amazon Prime, my suspicion is that it's not going to work. Which they, also they, almost defeats the, the the purpose and the utility of that feature. They said that it will work with certain partners, so Showtime, okay. HBO. I don't, I don't, I, but it's not going to. Of course, it's not going to extend to Amazon Prime. That's just not going to happen. I don't even. Does Amazon Prime even have a channel on the current Apple TV? Isn't that a big issue? That no, they're like? only on Roku and on uh, okay. on their Fire devices. So, 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 so they have. But by the time Apple gets to demo this thing, right? It's, a, it's more refined than the Fire was. It has a touch screen. It has a touch sensitive remote and a gyroscopic remote. And it has that nifty feature where you say, what did he just say? Or what did she just say? It rewinds 15 seconds and it throws, no, but and it throws the closed down. captioning on for, for during that time period. No, no, but that's that that's that's one of those, those uh, things that they only do on the keynote. That doesn't go in real life. In real life, the baby is screaming, and you're not going to want to talk. You're going to want to hit pause, I, I, and you're going to hit eight seconds. You're not going to say, what did they just say? Okay, you're, what you're, if you're alluding to the fact that people don't want to talk into a remote, that still feels a little like, like weird, especially if you're sitting alone in your house 
watching TV. Yeah, it, it just feels weird, I guess. Maybe we'll culturally get over that. But I think you're wrong about that particular feature. I think that that's something – I do that all the time. I like to watch with captions on. It annoys the people I watch with. But I, I want to know every line that people spoke. So That's also a, a very organic phrase. That's something you might accidentally say in the middle of watching something. And then and 15 seconds is too, is too long. Well, usually eight seconds is deemed now. So, the Paul, my record. Alexa, my Amazon Echo now, uh, actually woke up twice during the, the keynote, and it was during the TV times. So here's the thing. It is, an, right, it is natural. So if all you got to do, because it's not a hey Siri thing, but if all you got to do is press that button and say that, Maybe because it feels natural, it'll it'll. We work. have to press the button and say, which is also really annoying because if you had to push the button, just add four more buttons that has an eight second back. Okay, so I agree. So 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 there are apps now. I think this thing, and they and they they chose a demo of guys from Melbourne, Melbourne, Melbourne. Uh, that that it's it's that Frogger clone app where you have to go across the road. Crossy road. Crossy road, where the only controls are relative. Like you never. You're, you're all, it's, it's like Frogger. They're all relative. You never you know, point to a place and it goes there. So that works perfectly when there's no cursor. And there's no cursor on the Apple TV. So certain games will lend themselves to it. But I think... No, but you're not going to play games. I, I have I have games on my Roku. I never play it. Have it on my Amazon Fire. Never play it. Because I don't who develops games for the Roku? This is going to be a more robust game platform. Like People are going to actually build apps... I, I hope the development process is somewhat similar to It'll be, of course it will. It, it, of course it will be. And there's only certain resolutions that they have to be concerned with. You know, there's 4K TVs. There's, there's just another set of resolutions. If the device is powerful enough, this will eat the lunch of Nintendo. It'll prevent a lot of people, I think. I mean, a certain segment of the people that get a PS4 or whatever they're at now and, and an Xbox. This could be big. It's 150 bucks. No. I, I, okay. I, Look, I, I think I, the- I have an Xbox One. I'm not a big gamer. Like I, I just want casual games, right? If I I'm I'm sort of jealous. Like I if I had an Apple TV, I would probably that would probably be my gaming device. No, no, you're both wrong. I'm telling you, you're both wrong. I think, okay, so Paul and I, we're in the, the camp. This is the type of thing that... Oh, I want you to cross your road with each other. And, then, remotely. And, you, and you can do that. You can do that. I didn't even see it. I think one person was on the phone and one person was using the haste. Hey, you, you like, I get the idea of game. I, like, I got that, that there are games. Roku's been doing it for years. They've had games. God, don't you not really sound like the Bill O'Reilly of, of, like, the tech, of like the tech bloggers? No, here. I'm but just, letting you just know. setting yourself up t- to be wrong, that you're just... Being stodgy, prove me wrong. I mean, in two I or see three years, it doesn't work. I don't think that the Apple Watch is going to be this huge revenue-producing thing for Apple. I think it's a it's closer to the the, the, the pet project realm for for uh, for for Tim Cook. I think that Apple TV as a gaming platform and as an, an another dimension of the App Store is going to be huge. Okay, let's move. Let's move on to uh, the iPhone. Is that all that we have left? And I also think that the, the Apple TV apps, people will be paying $20 and $30 for a real console quality app and that there will be Bluetooth gamepads. If Apple announced a gamepad, that would be the end of it. I just, You're, wrong. I, You're I, wrong. I just want to go back You're and wrong. say that this remote also charges through the lightning port, which I think is very cool. You're, you're wrong. Okay. I mean, you're not wrong on that, but. Okay. So the <laughs> iPhone. Guys. Okay. So everyone knew it was coming. They are slightly bigger, which I think is is, is, is a little bit lame. Um they're, but they're bigger, they're bigger in both men in, in the height and the depth. Okay. They're, they're, yeah, they're so thinner, lighter, and faster. There's no thinner. Wait, so let me just verify this. Yeah, it, you know, it says that the width is the same. I'm sorry, I'm looking at the iPads. I think that they're they're bigger, they're slightly uh, is there more battery in there? No, I think the battery is exactly the same. But we get we don't get force touch, they take it, they 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 cube it, and we get 3D touch, okay, because it's that sensitive and all that. And the functionality is cool. You can do things right from, for the first time, you can do something besides delete an app from the iPhone home screen. I don't think there's ever been something else you could do. You could get notifications with a bubble, like a, a number or a dot. This is the first time that the home screen does something with the apps besides let you just launch them. And yeah, there are some pretty cool shortcuts. They didn't mention that there was a developer API to let non, to let third party apps do it, but this is where they're going. It's like preview. And that's worth saying that they do this now on the new MacBooks. They do it on the iPhone and, of course, on the Apple Watch. It's pretty impressive. 
So I didn't watch this. What number did they show for the cost? Did they show the subsidized cost? Did they show the monthly well, cost? Or did they show the outright the cost? The costs are almost exactly the same, except for one change, which I was almost going to mention at the top of the show. But let's get Force Touch out of the way or 3D Touch out of the way before we do this. So, Paul, I mean, this it seems to me that this is the type of thing, if you're on the train and you see someone touch your messages app and go right to their girlfriend, it's kind of cool, right? Like this is a, this is could create envy between the 6 and the 6S users, I think. Yeah, I mean, no. this is a cool feature. I, I, it, it doesn't seem that big on the surface. On the surface. Um, yeah. But like, I, I, th- I think it's going to fundamentally change the way you would interact with your phone. Like it's, it's, it's small enough and big enough at the same time to actually like change how you use your, your, your device. Now, Han, you're just jealous of it because one, Android won't get this for a while. And two, you have such ham handedness about you that you would just force touch too hard and just crack the screen. Yes. Well, oh, no, no, no. Look, I, I get the idea and I, and it, okay. It's nice and everything else. I'm not going to argue with it's that's if that's the differentiating feature, do you upgrade? Well, here, here I would, I mean, it's more than that. It's the camera's much better. It's just the standard upgrades that we're, we're it's faster. The camera's better. The battery life, it's all listed as exactly the same. But between the, you have to say to yourself, between the camera and the fact that the front camera is better and you can launch the selfie thing directly from the, the camera icon on the home screen. And even though this might not be a hardware limitation of the device, on the 6S, they let you use the front screen, the regular screen, as a flash for selfies. All these things taken together, it's a nice s upgrade i think it's an it's an s upgrade so the the quite no no go back to my question what price did they did they show on screen because that was the, the exact big same price as before it's, it's identical. so well no no what i was saying is i which carrier now allows an an upgrade price i don't think any of them i don't think at&t verizon or t-mobile have i think upgrade price Verizon still like we were talking to paul about this in the chat but i think verizon still does it it just isn't financially it doesn't make sense to do it i think you don't get a lot for signing that contract now but I think Verizon's the only one. Uh, so, so no, no, my friend's trying to upgrade his phone, and they're telling him he has to do the monthly fee. So I think it may be Sprint on some weird plan, and Verizon on one plan, and AT and T. If you've been an existing customer also, for ten years, also rose gold. It's like not. It's like pink. It's like pink now. There's a pink iPhone effectively coming from Apple. So two and a half minutes. But, but that was the issue. And then I do like their upgrade program. They're well, taking it. And saying, this is this is this is the one more thing. This is the this is like their secret like thing that they're slipping in. Apple is now through a third party, but Apple is now financing iPhones. And you get Apple Care Plus built into it. They can probably beat the carriers on price and they're going to force the prices down via the carrier. More people are going to have to go into the store if they want this deal. And yeah, for 32 or $36 a month, it seems like a really good deal. Well, at times four in a family and you're paying $120. But it makes for it, it, it lower. It also as an, an S upgrade year, it lowers the barrier to entry just psychologically. Cause if all you're doing is swiping your credit card for like a credit, kind of like a, a soft credit check, and then they are charging you $32 and you leave the store with an iPhone, that feels pretty good. I, I, I do want to say, though, that it's, a, it's, it's, a, it's an interesting path for Apple to go down to start doing that. Well, I think it's easier at some level. I think you do it right. You buy your phone. The day the new one is announced, you, you start the selling process. And you, so you sell it for the most amount of money that you can get. And you're probably only paying $200 every year. To upgrade. Well, no, it'll be 300 something dollars, but you get Apple care plus during that time, which adds $129 to the base price of the phone. I do want to say that 16, I understand why they do 16 gigabytes, but it's getting abusive. Paul, you, you get the last word. Yes. I, people are going to do the financing thing a lot. Absolutely. Right. A lot of people taking advantage of it. Right. And it's, it's, it. it you get to do it yearly. They have full control over this the, this relationship. I like the the financing thing. It's an inter, it's an interest free loan, and you get Apple Care, and you get a new one every year if that works for you. And I think that the carriers moving to this upgrade model is a good thing because it's going to uh, okay. it's going to push so all everyone, the phones. So everyone has to remember to go on blab.com in, t- in a year or two years, and it's still ex- blab.im, excuse me, and see if Himes' uh, poor forecast for the Apple TV games pans out, or whether or not Paul and I are correct. For episode 186 of In 30, yet another Apple keynote dead and gone. Okay, everyone. We'll talk to you later.